Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 Records video and another one in the series in which I'm taking a closer look at the full discography of solo work of David Gilmore because later this week we're getting the release of his new fifth album and today I'll be looking at his third On an Island. On an Island was released in 2006, 22 years after the release of his second album About Face which I reviewed in this video. On an island. Well, I really remember the, the release of this record pretty well. Because I was just into Pink Floyd. I got into Pink Floyd one and a half year before the release of this record. And so suddenly everybody was talking about the new David Gilmore album. And I wasn't used to people being this thrilled or excited uh, about a solo album by one of the big bands, you know. I was a Queen fan before that. I was uh, I loved The Who. Um, there was some other bands, U2, The Rolling Stones I listened to, and then I got really into Pink Floyd. And then when the, On an Island got released, everybody was talking about it, and I thought, hey, but, but, but I, I've, I haven't heard anybody this excited when Brian May came with an album, so what's going on here? Now, at the time, I uh, I put it on, I listened to it, and I thought it was okay. I wasn't blown away by it. I did really like, and I still do like, the artwork. I mean, back in the day, I imagined this to be of some sort of Caribbean island kind of feel. Now, having been to the UK, for example, which I, I had never seen uh, when the record got released, I hadn't been there. I think, oh, but this, this could very well be one of those northern or, or southern or, or western islands in the UK having a certain air and atmosphere. And that air, that is, that atmosphere is what makes this record actually pretty good. I have a different feeling about it now than I had back then. It's not that it's grown on me. Um, I do have the sense that Especially if you take a look at the first two albums of David Gilmore, the, the one, the first one which I like, the second one, I do not. Um, I think this is the first one in which I hear he found the right tone for his solo work. Even better than on certain post Waters Pink Floyd albums, because you hear him struggling there. But there is a certain calm, a certain ease in the air of the music, in the subject, he stays away from the pretension. And why do I say pretension? I don't think Pink Floyd was a pretentious band. I think Roger Waters was very direct in what he had to say, but Roger Waters had a lot to say. He wrote good lyrics. He had control and he, had, he didn't have to search for depth. Depth was just all around in his nature. And he was a frustrated man, but he was he could dive into his frustration and, and paint pictures, tell stories with a lot of insight about human nature. Um, he might, I mean, he was opinionized about human nature. He was criticizing human nature, but always in a, a, a good, direct, sometimes poetic manner. So the moment Waters left, you notice that David Gilmore had the idea that I am serving an audience which need this, needs this depth, which needs this in intellect. And he just couldn't, couldn't write that way. I mean, he, he, just, he just couldn't. So then it gets pretentious. I think pretentiousness is something that happens when you um, do not meet the, the things you pretend, uh, yeah, the, the things you try to say. So, so, so it's pretending to have something to say. This one doesn't have that. And that's what makes it so good. It's just chilling out. It is David Gilmore on an island with a guitar. Everything seems to serve him well in this one. The opening track, Castellorism. 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 I don't know. Uh, gorgeous track. It's a beautiful instrumental track. Um, it doesn't want to do too much. Does have a nice rough edge. Also has a certain chill. 
And then the second song, you think, okay, well, perhaps you had a great opener. But the song On Island, when, when he starts singing, it's as if for the first time on a solo album, the lyrics, the musical tone, and his voice meet. I believe David Gilmour fully on On an Island. Not much is going on. He also has some help. He has some of the best help around. David Crosby and Graham Nash. Yeah, Graham Nash. I, I always have to think, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, David Crosby, Graham Nash. Yeah, Graham Nash. Crosby and Nash. And they do an incredible job. Although it's not like they are... Um, trying to make it into a duet or make it really big no they do a backing vocal that is just right which gives it the delicacy of pink floyd vocals and pink floyd harmonies it gives it that delicacy but it does not give it the pink floyd feeling or vibe i mean crosby and stills they have an own identity and with that on such an early track the second track it feels as if Gilmore is on full power of his level, not trying to be Pink Floyd, although it's obviously also clear that he's not some sort of blues rock musician or pop musician. He, he's a Pink Floyd guy, not trying to do Pink Floyd now. And it is in the atmosphere of Pink Floyd, but it has its own unique way. The addition of Crosby and Nash is just gorgeous. I also think that Gilmore was solo-wise, if you take a look at the tour to, uh, to support this album, it's incredible. There is this DVD Blu-ray from uh, called Remember That Night, which was recorded at the Royal Albert Hall. Crosby and Nash were there. As a matter of fact, David Bowie came on for an encore, and he nailed Comfy Numb. He did an interesting job on Arnold Lane. But there is a certain magic in the air, a certain on an island magic. Gilmore had chill and confidence during this record, during this tour. And I think this is by far his best solo album. Well, until now, I don't know what's, what the newer album will be like. But I really enjoyed listening to this. Yeah, this is nice. So I'm curious. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.